Today we think of Scotland as the land of bagpipes. Beautiful scenes of locks, tartan, and Harry Potter trains. But for those who left here in the mid 1800s, it was a completely different story. These people were prepared to give up everything and everyone they'd ever known for a new life in a far off land. And some of those with few prospects chose Otago as their new home. This is the very spot where the entire Otago block was purchased for local Maori for just £2,400. It was supposed to be an exclusively Scottish settlement. But desperate for numbers, they had to let a few English in too. The Highlanders were hard, but they couldn't resist the firm hand of their landlords or the coming of the sheep. Founding Otago was one thing, but there was a lot of hard work lying ahead for the pioneers. If it wasn't for the support of local Maori during that first hard winter, Dunedin's pioneers might have starved. Ironically, it was the more adventurous types who ignored Captain Cargill's advice and pushed on into the rugged hinterland who were more likely to make their fortunes. Dunedin was not as they had envisaged it, and a bitter power struggle now broke out amongst the elite. This is how Dunedin as we know it came into being. <laughs>